Wyfield Apries is the property of my wife Marion and myself. Uh, we've been in bees now for uh, 51 years this, this coming year. Um, but as far as the syrups concerned and the fondant, we've been doing the syrup and fondant now for about 12 years. Uh, when I was introduced it, to it by a chap who had gone to uh, Europe to look at it and uh, was very pleased with what he saw. Belgazuk, as the name slightly suggests, is Bel uh, Gozuk sh Sugar. Um, Belgazuk is a company, one of only two companies in the Northern Hemisphere that pro process sugar through the factory and only sugar through the factory. They have got the highest ISO, ISO number, sorry, start again. They have got the highest ISO number of any food production factory in Belgium. Uh, we buy the sugar GM free, near nicotinicide free uh, in Germany. Uh, it's transported and fed into the factory at the rate of 20 tons every two hours, 20 hours a day and processed into a huge variety of products for the catering industry across uh, Europe and they also export to Australia and America. But the bee food side accounts for about 7% of the Belgazoo big business, but it's expanding. And they make two basic products, the invert bee syrup, which is what we, the liquid version of it, uh, of the food, which we feed generally spring and autumn. And then for winter feeding through to spring, they make the Fonda bee candy, or Fonda bee fondant, um, which we also stock for the benefit of those that want to have the choice of the two. Good, so we've arrived in the Apre between the two rivers in just outside Hay and Wye, the Thlinby and the Wye, and we're going to feed um, a row of hives starting with this one. We take the roof off, good strong metal roof, which I've got my initials on the inside in case anybody thinks they're more entitled to it to me than me. <laughs> Um, take the quilt off and underneath here we have got the clearing board which we used to um, take the, the honey off and, and put wet supers back on and so forth. And it's got two thicknesses, it's got a, a single bee space one side and a four bee space the other. Now to feed the bees we're going to give them a gallon. we we'll just leave these few stragglers there for a minute. with the invert bee syrup, which is quite dense, it's 1.37 kilos to a litre, and we would beg that you don't dilute it with water because if you do that will spoil the keeping qualities of it. It can be used right through the autumn with a great deal of safety simply because it's inverted and it will keep and will not cause dysentery or go beery as it were to upset the bees. Now we fill that nearly to the top. What I hate to do is to turn that upside down straight onto a hive of bees before it's got achieved its vac vacuum and you've got a lot of syrup wasted really either going through um, the varroa floor or the solid floor depending on which you use. So I take a bucket with me to the apron and we, I'll take that off there, put this up here so that you can see it better, turn it upside down and with the balls of your thumbs just squeeze it gently making sure that the lid has been well, still a little bit there you see, let's give it another squeeze Stay quite safely upside down like that. 
then take the rhombus off. Bees are underneath waiting for their syrup. And put that on top of there like that. And there is their supper, dinner, bed and breakfast. We'll put a super as an eek round about it. Put the quilt over it just to retain the heat because the autumn is going on now. We take them off for the summer but we generally put, start to put the quilts back on around about the end of September, beginning of October depending on the weather. Let's put the lid on this to stop bees going inside it and drowning. Lid back on the original invert bee container. And finally, but most important, is to complete the record card. Which I put in my pocket. I put today's date. And just write in one gal. And I just usually put an S for syrup which is what it is at the end of the day. And we usually put our, uh, leave the, the hive record cards um, on top of the, the quilt and put the roof back on. Or put them in a plastic wallet and put that inside there as well. Plastic wallet stops the bees, particularly the ones that are good at cleaning the hive from chewing them up. Mm. This time of year is perfectly all right. And that's it ready for winter. Right then, well we're going to start feeding this hive. We've taken the supers off it. Um, we've, we will take the crown board off it as well, but not its queen excluder because I generally leave the queen excluders on the hives. Because with the Waldron queen excluders, the bees come much more freely up and down through them anyway. So, taking the roof off and fetching one of two that we could use, either an Ashworth with the centre of the feeding passage for the bees at one edge. This is the one I prefer because the bees can come en masse up through here uh, in great numbers to keep their warmth up over the top. Sometimes this has got glass in it, sometimes it's solid. There's a, just a, enough shy of the timber in the bottom for the syrup to run through. And <clears throat> where the hives are on a site like this, which is not a permanent site, we would put the, the feeding edge of it to the lowest point of the hive. So generally speaking that's to the front, so it would go on the hive like that. We take crown board off, queen excluder here, bees are just underneath, ready to come up and feed. And we fit that on 18 and 8 so that it's square with the rest of the hive. So today we're going to feed invert bee syrup which has been inverted during its production and this syrup we can use safely use later in the summer than ordinary sugar syrup because it will not it will stay stable in the uh, hive ideally to be capped but it doesn't have to be capped at all because it's guaranteed to stay stable for at least a year so just break the seal on the cap making sure it's not being used by somebody else and just pour the required amount in there. Now we generally give them two gallons. We might come back and give them give them more. <coughs> An alternative to the Ashworth feeder is to use a Miller feeder. Uh, this is a fe feeder with a central trough and, and two tanks, if you like, for it to, for the bees to come up the middle, over the top, and then it's got a um, foothold for the bees on both sides. It works extremely well, but you must be conscious of the slope in the high. Otherwise, if, if it's sloping the wrong way, the syrup will drain away from the bees and they won't get it. So, given that this hive is sloping towards the front, we put it on that way around, put the cover back on so that 
as it comes to near being empty, the syrup is draining to, to that edge and the bees can still get the last of the syrup out of the, uh, the feeder. The Danish should be fine. Well, we're now going to move on into fondant feeding. Um, a lot of people don't like to use fondant at all, and if the hive is well fed in the, in the autumn, there's very often no real need to use fondant. But we use Fonda B, where the sugars have been altered to more accurately reflect the nectar of your average flower, if you like. Um, increase the level of fructose in the uh, and glucose in the actual final product that we put on the bees. Now it comes in two sizes. It comes in a one box of five times two point five kilos, which are those. And today's the second of November and this has got a best before date of the 28th of March 2018, so it's it's good for 18 months. Now, you don't know whether the bees are going to eat all of this, or some of it, or whatever. What we tend to do commercially uh, in our apiaries now is to put one of these packs on, usually just before Christmas, um, and leave it and inspect it each month through the winter. We grow in all the bees every month anyway, just to check roofs and any possible damage and so forth. So the candy feeding works well with that. Um, and if they eat a whole one, then depending on how near we are to spring, will depend whether we give them another whole one of two and a half kilos, or we give them a smaller one, which is a one kilo pack. And this is dated the same way as well. So if I open the, the, um, the two and a half kilo one first, I just slit it, the hive tool, a knife, it doesn't matter. Slit it that way. Slit it down there. Not quite to the end. Different people have got different views as to how best to do this. And then you can take that, take the film, take the film back off it on itself and tuck it under. So that's ready now to go on a hive. There's the fondant there. It's, it's quite malleable and generally unless we have a really damp, if the hive's damp or a very wet winter, it'll stay exactly like that right through the winter. By the same token, it doesn't, uh, the bees don't tend to suck the liquid out of it and leave it with a massive cakey stuff in the spring, which is uh, a problem with, with some fondants. But generally speaking, um, the fonda bee works extremely well in a wide range of temperatures. Now before I put it on, just to say that if the bees don't eat it all come the spring, either in the big pack or the small pack, you just simply fold that back like that, put some sellotape or any sort of normal adhesive tape around the wound, put it back in the box and it'll still be as good to use when you next want to come and take another um, packet out. So we'll put it on a hive now. Now there are two, several ways of doing this. Opened up the packet, have it bend it back. It bend it back there. Take the quilt off. Underneath there, we've got bees that are looking to come up to, to feed. I like the um, the crown boards with the the hole in, in the middle. Just flick a couple of these back there like that. Try not to crush too many, but they, they, amazingly they worm their way out and put it on there like that. You don't need um, an eek. Just put the quilt back on it to keep the heat in and put the lid back on. Job sorted. And I usually put a, a brick because this is not a permanent apiary, if they're in a permanent apiary, I put a brick that way on all the hives so that I know they've all been fed. And if there's a hive or something needs looking at the next time, 
we've got a, a language in brick <laughs> which we use like honey coming off a hive we put the brick we put the brick vertical so that we know which hives to look at quickly as we go down the road. Anyway I, I just want to show a slight variation to this. If you've got a hive that's not too strong or not as strong as you'd like it to be and you want to put fondant on I would be more inclined to take the queen excluder off. Uh, we've got a queen excluder there now and the majority of, of people particularly the, the smaller beekeepers probably wouldn't have a, a multi-use uh, clearing board like I've got on here now so what we would put on with or without the um, this particular one clearing board or crown board is the more normal crown board with two porter bee escape holes in it and the, the, the object of the exercise is to put these holes where the cluster is in the hive and the beauty of of the manufactured ones at any rate is you've got one hole in the middle which my original round hole was and one hole here so if the cluster was over there you would turn the board round to wherever the cluster was but say that's the way it was and the clusters in the center so we've come to uh, beyond Christmas now and you've decided that you are going to put some fondant on my father always used to do it on St Valentine's Day because of global warming the whole business of feeding bees through the winter has come back and back and back so as I said earlier we would generally put it on prior to Christmas somewhere between mid-December and mid-January uh, and then if it requires a top up we would simply use a one kilo bag which we'd cut in exactly the same way like that catch that peel it back and the beauty about these packs is that they will cover two port of B escape holes put it on there like that put the crown board uh, uh, sorry put the quilt back on the knife back in your pocket so you don't lose it and roof back on write up the record card of what you've done and more importantly when you've done it and that hive is good again for another week or two or more depends on the season the rate they eat it some years they eat a lot of it some years they don't and that's why we tend to work with the two sizes now I'm going to show another variation on the theme now there's been increasing interest in recent times of going back to using pollen patties um, I don't really know why that is there's fashions in beekeeping as much as there's fashions in other things but there certainly is a great interest in giving bees um, pollen in the spring it's probably the single most difficult decision in the spring for a beekeeper to decide when to start feeding any, any syrup or fondant or in particular this stuff because if you feed it too soon you have to carry on for a longer period it's quite expensive to use um, and if you don't get there soon enough then the whole object of the exercise of getting pollen into the hive is lost bearing in mind that whilst the sugar provides the carbohydrate the pollen is providing the protein so this is kind of pollen gold which we bring in from Italy um, it's contains pollen which has been irradiated so that it's safe to use and fully approved by those concerned and that comes in packs of 12 kilos again um, 70 or 80 to a pallet as the name suggests <coughs> it is what it says on the label as they say candle pollen gold now because I'm Scottish and don't like using too much of this stuff because it is expensive there's a kilo in here which is 2.2 pounds I will cut this in into quarters if it's an ordinary season and 
I'll show you how we put it into the hive. So it's it's ide ideally you want to keep this in the warm for 24 hours before you bring it out to hive to make it fairly malleable. So you can see the bits of pollen in it. You cut it through the middle like that. Now we've got beekeepers, commercial beekeepers, who are using only candor pollen now, particularly the queen breeders who, who want to get their hives lifted early in the spring. Um, what I would say as a general rule of thumb is don't start to feed this until there's at least two different colours of pollen going in the hive. So you've got willow and crocus or a combination of any of these. Uh, and certainly don't start feeding this if there's not an outside, a small outside source of pollen, pollen going into the hive. Um, we pollinate <coughs> about 400 acres of apple trees in the spring for cider because we're living in the area around here in Wye and we, the farmers want us to bring bees to the apples in good strength and this is why we first started using this about five years ago. So we'll put that to one side for a minute. I, I would cut a, a block of this, a block of white fondant and press this, I'm going to press that into the middle of it and put that on top of the porter bee escape. Brilliant. Mm. Mm. Could you use the one that's on there already and put a bit Yes in? I could. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did we have inside here? We had a two and a half or a... No, just no, a, a, small a, small one. Just a small one. Yeah. Alright, we'll do that. That's not a problem. So, well, having decided that we're going to give the bees um, this pollen fondant and cutting it in such a way that we get about a quarter of a kilo or half a pound and you'll be amazed what difference this will make to a hive particularly if they need it. If you go down a row of hives in spring, you'll probably find that uh, 8 or 9 out of 10 have got adequate supplies of pollen. But you always seem to get the odd hive, but for some reason or other doesn't carry any pollen in the hive at all. And this spring was very much like that. You had hives with 3, 4, 5 kept frames of pollen glazed over, properly put away by the bees, and then the hive next door would have very little. And this is really intended for for the, the hives that are sh short of pollen within the hive but we give it to if we're going to give it to an apiary we give it to all the hives in the apiary and they thoroughly enjoy it so so we've got a situation okay. where we've got bees gosh look at them now that's the hive that's just been fed. We've had a very mild autumn. They're covering nine frames now and they're still breeding but we've got a bit of weight into them and hopefully that'll take them through until we want to put fondant on. So to do that we put a normal crown board on and you can see the bees down through there. In the case of this hive, if you turned it around that, around that way, you'd still see the bees. But if I'm in any doubt as to which way to put this, I always put it that way on with the two holes at the back of the, the, the hive so that ventilation can come through the hive and up at the back of it. I know that doesn't apply all the time because we're about to cover it over. So we've got a block of candy, which white candy, which is the Fonda Bee, which is the sort of base product that we use all winter. Cut it open as I described earlier and into that I will just put about that much of the Fonda Bee which has got pollen in it. Candor Pauline Gold. It's made by a different manufacturer to the Fonda Bee but uh, it seems to work well for the, the way we do the bees and just put that so as it covers the two porter bee escapes just press it down slightly the bees will soon come up to it and they'll eat they'll eat a mixture of both but they very very seldom uh, last year out of 73 hives there was only one hive didn't actually eat all of it first because um, they sense that they've got a source of nutrition which previously they didn't have and when they come up to the top of this, 
um, you can see at a glance whether they need any more or what you're going to do next. Now this is a pack, a 2.5 kilo pack, which has uh, just been put on. If you were to come back to this in a month's time and you found a significant hole in the middle, you have to make a decision as to whether you're going to leave them with what's around the outside because that tends to be what happens. And again, because I'm Scottish or Cardigan, I don't like to waste what's in the corner. So what we do in recent times now, instead of taking that off and putting another one on top, we leave the one that's three quarters eaten, let's say, and just cut round there like that. A fairly good cut, about two centimetres, two to three centimetres, about an inch from the edge of it. So if you can imagine, all this under here has been eaten. And rather than take it off as I used to do, take the whole thing off and fiddle with the corners and whatnot, I just peel that back, because the bees are now up in here, and take a one kilo pack and cut the same shape on the one kilo, on the one side only. Might have been better if I'd pre-cut it. Cut it on the, down the side here like that. Take that and just put that on top of the hole where the bees are. It has two advantages. One is that it puts pot fondant back in the middle of the heat of the bees. The more important advantage is that they, it doesn't crush bees. If you take the whole thing off and slap another one on when there's a load of bees around, you'll crush bees. This, because the bees are able to be in the hollow that's underneath here, you need to put that back like that if you want, but it's, that, that is still all cellophane there. And then by the spring, they will um, eat into the corners there, and into the corners there, and of course finish that one um, as the weather gets better in the spring. And this one, you can do the same as I described earlier. If you want to leave that one as it was, you could put on a one pound with candopoline in it. Put the roof back on, you just about get away with the, the, uh, the quilt. And um, within about 24 hours, especially if there's a brick on top of it, a four inch roof, will sit snugly back on that. It, it will spread out a little bit. Um, and the heat of the hive actually helps it to spread out quite quickly. Job sorted, bees fed.